now we have used a variety of objects, right? We've used the window object, and then we've used the document object and objects that are available within the document. So uh, another type of object that is available to us are built-in objects that come with the JavaScript language. And one of those um, built-in objects is the date object. <clears throat> and you can create a new date object by using the new operator. So that keyword new, <clears throat> excuse me, and there are four different ways to do it. You can do an empty one that will return the current date and time. You can put milliseconds in. It turns out date objects store the value of a specific date in milliseconds. And so that's its underlying, that's what it's actually stored at. So you can say how many milliseconds it is since January 1st, 1970. Or you can put in a date string. So in quotes, put in a date string. Or you can put in values for year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. And these ones would all be numbers rather than strings. So lots of different ways to construct date objects. And then there's lots of methods. So notice here there's a lot of get methods. So once you have a date, you can get different parts of it. Um, and, they, and they come in different uh, versions, right? So what is it returning here? Get the date, it returns the day of the month from one to 31, get full year, it returns that four digit year. Or, uh, so notice how uh, lots of get methods, there's um, set methods where you can set different parts of a date after you have one. Uh, and then there are conversions where you convert it to a date string. So if you want it, the, a string version of the date, you can get that. And then here's some other ones, um, local strings. Now notice that it converts the date object to a string using local conventions. And the, lo the locale is set in your computer. It's defined in there. And so these methods will use that lo locale setting on your own computer to, to format the date based on what is standard for your area. And there's not only you can do the entire one to get the locale string, but you can also just get a part of it. So you can convert it to the locale date string or the locale time string. And we're going to use a couple of these. So let's see, let's go to our tiny script and let's go ahead and define a variable of type date. So we're going to call this current date current day, and we're going to set it equal to a new. Here's how we create a new date. And now we're going to send it a date string. And the date string is May 23rd, and, uh, 2018. And we're getting this date directly from the textbook. And this will let us do things and see if we're getting the results we expect. And then in, in the end, we're going to change this to be the current date. But for now, this lets us really be together and I'll always get the same results no matter which day we're using it. 05 and then close the string with a quote and then a semicolon. So this creates a date object and specifically that date object is for May 23rd at 235. Okay so notice that it's a 24-hour clock and that's how you get a 14 and there's 12 would be noon and 14 would be two hours after that. Now we want to get the date string and the time string. So to do this, we're going to create two more variables. One, we're going to call it the date string, str. And that's going to be, and now know what we're going to do. We're going to use the object. And the way we use the object is with that variable name. So we say current day dot. And here's where we're going to use one of those methods. And notice how they all come up here in the editor. And the one we're going to use is to locale. And what we want is the date string for this one. And this is a method, so we put parentheses. We don't have to send it any information. And that'll put that uh, the day part of that in that variable. And then we want to do the same thing, but this time we want to do it the time string. And again, we're going to use the, our object current day. And now we're going to do to locale time string. And that will give us the time part of it. All right, 
Now, what we want to do is we want these to go in the date now. Okay, so up here, instead of using this, and this is the default, we want to change it to these two strings. Now, notice JavaScript runs in order. So if we want to use these variables, we want to define them first. So let's go ahead and take these variables and move them up so they <clears throat> are up here before we want to use them. So there we've added them. Now we've defined and given these variables values, and now we can use them here. And we want to use the date str right here, and we want to use the time str right here. Okay, now save this, and then let's go back to our web page. Now remember what it had, it had just those placeholders, and now when we refresh, what does it display? <laughs> that, that didn't work. So let's see what we did wrong. Notice what it did, it just put the text, and that's because we had it um, in the string itself. So let's go ahead and look at that. We just put it in the string, Okay, so look what I did. So I put it right inside the quotes, which, is a, which just makes it a string, not the variable. So if we want to use the variable, we have to put it outside of the string. So let's move that and put it before the string. So here we want it to put that date string. Then we want it to put the string. So how do we put strings together? This is our first time to do that. The way that you concatenate strings in JavaScript is with the plus operator. So here, date string, that variable is, an, is a string, right? And so here we've got a string, plus we want this break to be a string, plus we want the time string, okay? So there we go. So now what we've done is we've taken three strings, date string, the string that contains the break, ele the break element, and then the time string. And we've concatenated them or added them together. Concatenate and put them right up against each other. So let's go ahead and save that and see if this works more like what we expect. So we refresh, and there we have it. So there's the date string, and there's the time string on our page.